what is up guys we have qjs but in 3d which you look at that yeah okay most of these tiles are not in 3d but this one is because i actually configured a height uh regardless we can actually do this much better we can do a 3d model and i will show you how step by step in this video i am justin i host a gis community on school.com so that's school.com so gis and there's step by step tutorials on how to use QGIS as well as how to pick and set up a WebGIS. So if you want any help with that, just click the link down below. Uh, you can get help from me, from community members, and yeah, really go through the courses on how to learn QGIS and whatnot. Bunch of resources and data portals in there as well. Very valuable if you are just consultant or getting started in the field. So um, let's start off from scratch. First, you just need to make sure that your QGIS is set up and that you have the quick OSM plugin installed. So that's this green one right here. I'm not entirely sure if it is standard QGIS or if it's a plugin. Um, let me check that right now, actually. Quick OSM. Yes, it is a plugin, but I think it is a default plugin for most people. Not entirely sure. Just make sure you install that with this button right here as soon as you search it. And then you get the QJS to free JS this plugin as well. And that will set you up for this particular 3D modeling video or tutorial or whatever. We'll zoom into New York right now because I hope OpenStreetMap actually has the building heights on there as well which I have no clue if that's the case. So let's just zoom in on Wall Street because, well, that's, that's cool, I guess. We will download OSM data from a query in an extent. We will want, we want all of the buildings. So we put up key building uh, value. You can keep empty or you can put on yes, or you can put on no if you want, not the buildings. If you want to see the buildings, then put it on yes or keep it empty. Then we can select the extent. Right now it's just taking the extent that we that our map is set on. We can also say I want to draw it. And I will tell it I want to use this particular part of New York. Great. And then we can run it. And it will give us all of the buildings in this situation. Complete. Boom. There we go. We have buildings and a few points. Not sure why it's giving us the points back. I assume those are the addresses or something. And lines as well. Now, let's remove those to start off. Because I don't need those. And let's check out if these buildings have height. So click this button right here. Click a building. And you will see all of the actual data in there. Uh, seems as if there is no height data in there. By the looks of it. Uh, oh, it does here. We have height. Okay, that's great, because in my hometown, that field is always empty. Uh, in this case, it's also empty. Let's check this one. This one does have a height. Okay, we can work with this. At least a few buildings have an actual height. So next, we click our new plugin, which is the QJS2 3JS exporter. And it will show us a flat map with our data, kind of the way we were looking at it already, but it's just a tile that we're looking at and we can well view it in 3d as if we're looking at a uh, actual like 3d model that's about to go get a 3d print of it made <laughs> but what we want to do is select this layer and now it will upload it as actual features on top of the base map additionally we want to use a properties and we select type extruded we put the z coordinate at zero and the height at oh sorry i missed a step go back i missed something well we can put it at 24.3 because i assume that's the average or something and it will put all of the buildings at that height which i mean this looks cool but this is not the actual height of each building uh, as you can imagine not all buildings have the same height in new york uh, so let's go back a step i missed something we need to grab our toolbox right here. 
go to the vector general and we will I'm not entirely sure if it's a vector general actually. Vector analysis, vector integration. Um, I'm still searching right here. We have aggregates, we have boundaries, fixed geometries, line substring. Nope, nope, nope. Polygon nice. I just want to edit fields. Or no, uh, refactor fields. There we go, refactor fields. That's what we're looking for. So click that, F, look for that in your toolbox. We have sources and now we want to look for the height somewhere near the bottom roof shapes as well but we want to look at the height there we go height make sure this is an integer and then just run it boom now we have a new layer green one we can remove this one if we want you can also keep it now we have the same exact layer, however the actual height now is saved as not a string attribute but a integer attribute, meaning it is recognized as an actual number by the system. If we now go back to our plugin, or right here, our plugin, we actually, let's reopen the plugin, it should show us the green layer, or in your case maybe any other random color, but the new layer at least. We load the polygons and we go back to properties, we click extruded, we say absolute, keep the Z coordinate at zero because this is the offset, so this is like the floor of the building, you just want to keep it at zero. Uh, or depending if you actually use a digital elevation model, where you actually have the surface heights as well, which may be different depending on if you are looking at a city or a... Um, rural zone because well in the netherlands pretty much everything is flat so that's not really a consideration for me <laughs> usually but if you use a digital elevation model you want to use just the floor height or whatever maybe you have some sort of attribute in your building data set that does show a, a base height like the actual terrain height but right here in geometry you want to use the actual top like the height that's what we do right now and then we click apply and then we say okay look at that we got our 3d model set up and yeah that's how easy it is like i don't have 3d experience i do not well i have a human geography and spatial planning degree but i was never taught to do this i have no clue so i just figured this out uh, just an hour ago and uh, you can do the same because well qgis and this uh, plugin both are completely free open source whatever so you can do this as well uh, moreover you should be able to actually export the data or save the scene as an image <laughs> let me do that for the thumbnail image width whatever there we go uh, regardless uh, you can also make animations if you have like data that is like displaying a trend over time or different scenarios whatever and you could do that as well as you can see a few of the buildings do not actually have the height attribute filled out shame because that means we cannot actually look at how tall these buildings are in our data set i mean you could still find it online or whatever or maybe use an alternative way to still plug that attribute that information in but regardless right now we have an actual 3d model very cool my bad, I just overlooked it. It's very simple. You can actually use file, then use export to web and save it as an HTML file. Or maybe you can also save it as a different file. Mobile. No, I think you have to save it as an HTML file. Directory, so for me, that's downloads. I called it index.html. Let's just say 3D HTML. 
page title 3D New York or like 3D New York and that should do the job really enable the viewer to run locally Ooh, it's actually going to be a viewer so in this case let's put index HTML okay let's try this because I am interested to see what this is going to look like we have a scene file and a web page file no way <laughs> it's actually exported as a viewer oh that's incredible oh this is amazing I did not expect that I did not expect that so you can even do this wow that's impressive I have tried and see to see if I could like uh, use this in a web JS so like on a browser based JS because well this file right here I cannot very easily share with somebody else without them having to download it and everything uh, which is just not ideal so uh, I'm sure there's a way to do that but right now I just haven't found it just yet regardless uh, because I mean I cannot export it in a way I would like so we're not there yet but we are close or maybe I could use this one save current scene oh, that's just the scene though I don't want the scene I want the actual data this is the entire settings file which is also not what it is I want a plugin settings well it's cool as well but it's also not what I'm looking for export to web save scene export settings it's just not it's just not it's just not that well I've tried to also use this in a web.js but uh, I haven't figured out how to export it in a way where I can actually upload it into a web.js just yet uh, we're getting there uh, I'll find a way to do that regardless I hope this had some value to you just for the visualization purposes uh, to start out with it's definitely cool already hope this been valuable to you I'll see you in another video